Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Um, if you're new to ACS, I'm the president or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'll just be hosting the session today. It's just a casual workshop with Derek mm. Gaddafi, founder, creative director of New Wave Magazine slash studios. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned before, feel free to interrupt, ask questions, put them in the chat. It's just a really casual session. Um, so yeah, Derek, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, um, thanks for the introduction. And um, like I said before, thanks for the opportunity. Um, like you said, my name is Derek. I'm the editor-in-chief, creative director of New Wave and New Age Studios. So like what we kind of do is like we're a publication that speaks on the creative industry, whether it's music, fashion, photography, um, filmmaking as well. And um, yes. it's also a platform where we kind of get together with like young talents and, and like budding talents in the creative industry and hopefully work on like more commercial projects as well. So that's where like the studio aspect comes in. And um, you kind of use that as a as a way to like, not only promote people, but also like give them opportunity within the industry. So um, yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, just to inform everyone as well, I have another screen down here. So if I'm looking down, I'll not be rude. I'm still looking at you all. Um, but yeah, you mentioned briefly what new wave is how did yeah. it start um yeah so basically i went to architecture school um from like 2014 to 2017 so i, I studied architecture then and like before then i had kind of no idea of like anything to do with like the creative industry as a whole um i was more focused on like just being an architect and wanting to be an architect and obviously going through that process um it was cool it was great and then i graduated in 2017 um, and then I actually went on a holiday. So I went to Houston, Texas. And over there, I like, went to like a few like galleries. Like there's like the Manil Gallery. I don't know if any of you have heard of like an artist called Rothko, Mark Rothko. He's like a famous like abstract expressionist or whatever. So like he, he has like his own like um, uh, gallery there, like a, like a chapel. So I just go in there to just check it out, see like all the different cool stuff, like side from the exhibitions and stuff. And from there, with a couple of people that I knew back home um, from like secondary school and stuff, like I knew that they, one of them was into fashion and another one was into like photography. So I kind of thought that when I come back as a way to like put together a portfolio for myself on like the architecture aspect of things, just like being different and diversifying myself a little bit, showing something different. Um, I was gonna like put together a magazine, like it was gonna be like a creative magazine and um, yeah, they, they thought it was cool. They thought it was a good idea. So while I was in Houston, I was just like collecting different things. Like um, when I went to the galleries, I would take like the leaflets and stuff and read, read about it and like just ask people questions. And those things that I did over there started to like form like the content for like, what was gonna be like the first issue of the mag. So when I came back now, I, I like literally, I came back on the 5th the 6th of September was my birthday. And then I started New Wave on the 7th of September. And like, um, what year, sorry? Um, 2017. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry, yeah. continue. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was literally the day I started New Wave. I, I made the logo that same day. I made the Instagram, everything. And um, we just started like pushing it and um, tried to get people involved. And most of the people that, initially were involved were my friends, like people that I knew from like secondary school and stuff. So it was just like pulling for, pulling on people's interests that I knew from before. Um, and then we kind of we kind of like just started from there, just started promoting it even before we even had any type of like actual product on like magazine. We just started pushing it, like pushing the type of content that we want, wanted on our page and one, I, I mean, we thought people would be interested in, and then that's when we started to garner like a bit of interest from people and stuff. So it kind of just started as like a passion project. It wasn't really like anything I, I, I wanted to take seriously at the time. And then it just grew from there. Oh, see. So when did, when was the first like physical magazine you had in your hands? Uh, so the, the first, the first one we had like physically was it actually issue three. So Literally, um, November 2017, we, we released our first one, I think. Yeah. 
So two months, like two, three months after I came back, we released our first issue. That was only digital. So it was like online on this platform called Issue. And then we released the next one in January. And then the third one came in May. So like, if you know anything about what we do right now, like, you know that like our print issues, like it's only like once a year. So because it, it takes so much time to like produce it. So at that time, it was more of like, just us like putting stuff out quickly. Um, just getting our name out there and getting people's interest involved and stuff. So the, the first time we actually printed something was like the third issue, which was like around May, actually no, March, March, 2018. That was the first time we actually printed and like I think it was only like what 10 copies or something just to see what it looked like and see how it felt and things like that. And it was it was good to have, man. It was it was it definitely spread like a lot of like energy in me to like just keep going and try and make it better than it was. No, I think how did you some of his people asked about how did you fund that first printing? Um that's actually yeah. So literally we just like, um, with my partners and stuff, we just put the money together. It wasn't too expensive, especially cause we printed like so, so, so little copies. So we just like, um, did, did like that. But then when like, I have a friend from, um, uh, from uni and like, he's like, he lives in Bahrain right now. So like when he actually saw it, he actually like gave me money to like print more because he was like, yo, like this is actually sick. You can keep going. So. He, he actually gave me some money to print some more of them, but initially it was like 10 copies. Like we just put it together between the, my co-founders and stuff. So, yeah. Ah, okay, see, how many do you print at the minute? You say you only release once a year. How many did you print for your last job? Yeah, so like this last this last run, we, we did 60. Um, so 60 copies for our last run. And like, it's just gonna, be around that or like more moving forward because like um these ones I think they they're sold out now so it seems like a lot of people like them so we're gonna for the next one we're gonna see if we can scale up and and go bigger. Oh, okay, where do you print it at? Is it like an independent print is or online thing? So it's like basically it's like a um like an online printer. We have over time we build like a good relationship with them so. Um, we kind of let them know exactly what we need and it's kind of easy, it's an easy process and um, yeah, just like it's a platform called um, You Love Print. Oh, okay. How many pages is a typical Um, So our ones, like I kind of like to do it around like two, 200, 200 or something because oh, like <laughs> yeah it's, it's quite a lot it's, it's a lot of stuff like especially for this last one like we did like around that like 216 like, like 200 gsm which is like the paperweight which is like very thick like it's pretty fat it's so, like that's what it looks like here oh okay that's yeah. lovely yeah i don't know if you can see it but like there's quite a lot of stuff in there and like there's hardly any ads like we have a few ads but not that many yeah so it's it's kind of it's kind of big. Understood. Deborah asks, like, as you were starting out, did you gain most of your popularity through words of mouth? Or was it actual like paid promotion? Um, yeah, word of mouth. Like even to this day, it's like mainly mainly word of mouth. Like people just like connecting with what we do and sharing it and like letting people know what's up and even stuff like this as well, like speaking engagements, letting people know us, um how we do things and stuff and. Like over time, it's been good because on the industry side, it's been great in terms of like with the artists that we work with. But just in general, of like the average consumer, like I feel like just us like really understanding how what people want, and like what audience wants, and like what we see as like um quality content. Because that's what I always say. Like with New Wave, is definitely like quality quality stuff done. Um, at the level of like whoever you want to mention, but it's still engaging with like what I see as like important aspects of culture and like just youth culture in general, especially in London. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'll ask, how did you get feedback from what you're producing? How do you gauge how the audience is reacting to it? Um, so like social media is always a great spot, but also like just like connecting with actual people that 
contact us and reach out to us and speak to us. And um, um, also we did a couple of events back in like 2018, 2018, 2019. Um, like, so the first ever event I did was in 2019, I think. And it was like an art gallery event. So we actually did like hosted an art gallery like, and like it was a pop-up as well for the mag. So we got a bunch of different artists to like, um, to exhibit their work and stuff, like some really sick, sick artists. And quite a few people came, a lot of people came to that. And like, we also had like film screenings on that day as well and different things were going on, like live art and like a bunch of different stuff. And then a month later, we had another one, which is kind of similar. And then we did like a fashion installation as well with a cool brand called Pieces. So those are the things that really like helped us resonate with like our, our um our like audience and like getting like the face-to-face -face feedback of, of certain things that we're doing and then December that same year we did another event called like Super Sundays um which was in like central London and it was like an event where we had like different things happening in different rooms at the same time so in one room you could have like a fashion talk and in the next room there's like a, a live performance from an artist and then in the next room, there's like a lounge playing music that you can just chill out to. You. Yeah. So all those things like helped us really make an impact in what wherever we were trying to disseminate to our audience. Oh, I see. That's amazing. I love that Super Sundays idea. If you do that yeah. again, hit me up. Yeah, no, <laughs> we're definitely, we're definitely gonna do that again. Cause like even last year, even through the whole the whole COVID thing, we we tried to do like a, a festival. Because Super Sundays in the festival, we I did that with like a partner of mine who I work, he owns his own brand called um, One Room Live, and they're like a live event type of company, and they do a bunch of other things, but mainly like live music. And then we kind of collaborated on that, and it was like a big deal. Like, like even for the festival, I think we had like over a thousand RSVPs to to come down and stuff. Um, which That's is cool. crazy. Yeah. That's sick. Vanessa asks like. It's amazing to see that you have 200 plus pages without hardly any ads. Is that something that you want to carry on going forwards or is that just for now? Um, I mean, like, is defo something that needs to keep going and it's going to be like a, a ma major thing for us. Um, but as, re as resources grow and things get better and improve, like, you're going to need to, like, um, invest in those things and see how it works. And, yeah, like, definitely like paid marketing and stuff is going to be something that's going to be part of our brand but like just for authenticity authenticity purposes like we do need to make sure that like whoever's on the ground and people actually resonate resonate with our stuff rather than just like um having it pushed in their face they need to actually connect with it and be interested yeah mm -hmm. So is that the primary way that you fund the magazine through paid ads or is there other ways that you gain income from it? Um, so like pretty much everything that we, everything that comes in goes kind of back into whatever we're doing. So we kind of fund it through sales, um, advertising sometimes, um, even also New Age Studios projects, um, like I said, because that's um, going to be like one of my main priorities this year as well, like really taking that to another level because like all the things that we produce in the magazine, most of it is produced by us, whether it's the graphic design, the curation, even events curation, like I mentioned, all those events, like they're all curated by myself and my team and um, editorials. I create direct shoots and videos. I'm going to be directing a video on Sunday. So these are all these, these are all the things that are going to, help us like um, be certified on the business aspect and then use the um, magazine as more of a marketing tool to connect with people and, and broaden our, our, our base. Understood. Um, Deborah asks, could you explain your role a bit more? Do you mostly oversee content and overall vision or are you more involved with design? Everything. Um, I do design, um, creative, creative direction, producing. Um, I, I interview people. I write sometimes. Um, 
Uh, I edit the video sometimes. I design the website. Um, yeah, like just the 360 view stuff. Cause sometimes I feel like it's a gift and a curse, but I'm so like particular about certain things. But my team definitely helps me a lot um, in terms of, especially the writing aspect of stuff. Cause we have quite a big team and like even photography and stuff. I shoot, I'm a photographer. So um, it just, all these things just help me have an understanding and like be able to communicate with people. Cause even if it's like, if I'm talking to a stylist, like I kind of know kind of what I want and like even help help them like whether it's like, I know this brand that, I know this brand's PR that we can reach out to for these garments and stuff like that, blah, blah. Or if it's on a photography aspect that can visualize and put together a mood board that directly um, communicates what I'm trying to achieve with a shoot and stuff. So those, those I, I feel like me having an input in all those things helps me and helps our brand to be even better. So when we do get, um, speak to other people with that are more specialized in those skill sets, like it's, it's a much easier conversation. That's good. How many are on your team at the minute? Um, uh, it's like, like I can't even. I think it's like thirty certain people, just like oh, doing. Mad. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like we have like a music team, and then we have a fashion team, and then we have a team where it's like just a bunch of different people that do different things, like directors, stylists, videographers, like um. Uh, writers, these all the people, they, 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 I really appreciate them because like they really connect with what we're trying to do. And I always try to like um, provide a certain level of value exchange for them and like always giving opportunities to new people as well that are like trying to get their foot in into the industry. So it's always, uh, our platform is always a good way to do that and like just like refine your skills and, and improve and get better. So yeah. Yeah, all of them like on a volunteer thing or? Yeah, so like um, our, our team is like, like um, yeah, on a, on a volunteer basis. Everyone like work, works with us like um, on that basis. Uh, but I do aim like to position them into other opportunities, whether it's like, I always ask people that join our team. It's like, what do you want to do? What, what do you see yourself a year, two years, two years from now? And then from there, that's where I, I create that value exchange. So even if I'm not paying you, I can get someone else that's going to pay you, if that makes sense. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Understood. Um, oh, Deborah, we'll come back to yours in a minute. So I've been, that's going to be a long one. Um, but Shashmani, how do you balance your time with all these roles? And how do you balance your own intentions with other people's input slash feedback? Um, I would, like in terms of the input and feedback, like I always try to like put aside my ego a lot, man, like and make sure that like I really analyze what is where where is that this person's trying to tell me because it, it can be very easy to be like, oh no, like it's my way or the highway. Sometimes my idea is actually better, but at the same time, you need to try it out and see and and see that perspective and see if it works. Cause even with like um some of our, our covers and stuff like that. And recently, um, some people in the team would be like, yo, I like it this way, I like it that way. So we try it out, we see if it works. And then if your idea is better, then we run with that. If it's not, then um, we just keep to what we have or like go with the best one. Um, and what, what was the first one? First question? Balancing time, right? But, yeah. Yeah. So in terms of like my time management stuff, like for me, I'm just like, I'm always on go, like, in terms of just doing something at any point of the day. Like, I don't really, it might be, it might actually sound a bit unhealthy and stuff, but I don't really do anything else, <laughs> to be fair. So it's like, I, I always, and over time I've been able to like, because I'm doing so much, I always say to myself, what's next? What do you have to do next? So, so that helps me manage myself and my time um, as best as I can. Um, sometimes it does get a bit like overwhelming, but like, I always tend to like try and figure it out and like just keep like figure out a way to like, to be more efficient as much as I can be. So I don't know I, there's not really a science to it or anything particular that I do. I just like 
I just just keep going, really. That's fair enough. Do you find that you do prioritize time for self care a lot of the time, or is that a rare thing? Um, um, like for me, for me, self care is like, like watching documentaries and stuff, or like I don't know, I don't, I don't know, like for me, I just because I love what I do so much, it's like I just keep doing it and just. Cause I I know where I want to be and where I want to go and stuff, so I I just like keep keep at it and stuff. So if if you if you're saying self care in terms of like what, what would you describe as self care in your what's your definition of self care? Well, as you like mentioned, self care for everyone is different. Um, mm-hmm. So if what makes you happy is working on your project, then I guess that is yeah. What well, it is for you, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just I just like definitely just make sure to like keep up um stay focused stay focused and just like just try and achieve something each day basically yeah that's fair enough that's fair enough um Deborah, we'll come to you um little shift what would you say your best and worst interviews have been that's like you've saying. conducted <laughs> oh that i've conducted Damn, mm-hmm. there's been quite a few good ones. Um, Sam Wise was a sick one. Like this cover that we did with Sam. Yeah, I love Steve. that one. Have you seen? I put yeah. that picture like everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this one, one is sick. Like I, I, I feel like this this cover is iconic because especially you like with him and where he, where I know he's gonna be in a, in a few years. Like definitely, this one was like important for us and like. This is one of the first instances of like really being in in the industry, and then I kind of I went to his crib to um interview him, and he was just like in the kitchen like just like um watching chicken and just chilling like just vibing, and then we just did the interview and it was a it was a cool insightful one it was it was really cool that one, that one was definitely memorable, um who else who else. Definitely recently, we just did an editorial with um, some artist called Eric Ark Elliott. Like, he's like an um, artist from the US. Um, he's based in um, LA now, but he's from New York. But like, I remember listening to him when I was like, in like, sec- like um, sixth form. Just like, I don't know if any of you guys know the Flatbush Zombies. Like, I used to I used to love the Flatbush Zombies. I'm the one that like, even told my friends about them and that. So that was definitely a, a full circle moment for me. Um, what other interviews have I done? Lash, Lasha for our, our recent issue. He's like a, he's like in, heavily involved in like the, the fashion industry. Um, He's like done runways for like Virgil Abloh. Um, he's close friends with like Matthew Williams, who's like the creative director of like, um, as you want to see right now. And uh, I did an interview with him, which is like, which is really cool to me because I don't know if anyone can see that. Last shot. Yeah, this one was a cool one. It's like insightful guy, cool guy. Um, in terms of the worst ones, damn, what's the what's been the worst interview? I don't think I've we've had any bad ones to be perfectly honest. Like, I don't think we've. I don't think I don't remember a bad a bad interview. Nah. I can't, I can't that's think. good to hear. No, that's good to hear. Um, but now to ask, like, when you have a big project like Super Sunday, so, how so long to, does it? Sorry to cut you off. Sorry to cut you off, but like, I do remember like shoots not going well, but not bad interviews. If that makes sense. So Elaborate on the shoot, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, um, there's been a couple couple shoots that we've done with artists where like. We we pull the stuff. I'm not gonna say their names, but we, we pull the stuff and then like the clothes and stuff like that. And then they show up and then they don't even want to wear it. And it's like, bruh, we just we got we're about to put you in some like Bianca Saunders, like some fresh stuff, and you just don't want to wear it. And it's like it just takes away a bit from like what we're trying to do with the shoes and stuff, but like that's kind of been or like people in their team being a bit like abrasive, asking too many questions, blah blah blah. But yeah, like outside of that, this has been kind of good, decent. Yeah. 
how do you deal with that um like scenario you mentioned when someone didn't want to wear the Bianca Saunders how did you deal with that in the moment you just have to keep it rolling just keep going like if they don't want to wear it all right cool let's just try and salvage whatever we can salvage out of the situation and make it as good as possible with what you have that, that's literally it like yeah, you, you can't you can't force it at all. No, that's fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll go back to Renata, who was um, asking that like, when you have a big project like Super Sundays, um, how long does it take to bring it together? Like, how many people are involved so in the so process? We, we, I think we did Super Sundays in a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, I wish I could show you some of the photos, like, um... Look, sorry, I have uh, to talk to you, because I was there, so I can't believe oh, that took a week. Yeah, 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 yeah nah, for, crazy. Yeah, so, like, it would be cool for you to, like, just tell people, like, a bit of, like, your experience, because cause it, it might sound, it might sound, like, like, not, it, it won't make sense if I kind of explain it, but it would be good, cool to see, like, what you thought of the thing and stuff. Cause like it was like I don't know how many different rooms there was at least it was at least over there was over five or something like that and like in each room yeah. you had different things going on you had a room where there was like film screenings and then you had another yeah. room where there was live music and you had another room where like people were like discussing things and you had another room where it was like a 90s room or something and then there was like a yeah. gallery space as well my friend's work was and it was all just it was yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, that 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 all took a week to do. It's it's crazy, man. Cause like, this is this is like a. I haven't said said this publicly or anything, but basically, the space that we were gonna do that that thing in, um, Super Sundays, like, I was like supposed to be getting like a job there, like as like some sort of like um event manager or something. So, basically, when I first came in. It, the way the way I got brought in was like very weird. It was like yeah, just like just come in, and then the, the people at the higher ups like they didn't really know who I was or what I was doing. And the person that brought me in, they knew what I was doing, new wave, and knew like what I was trying to do and stuff. But everyone else didn't really understand. So one of the guys that was there, he was like an events manager as well, like more experienced. Like so, he said to me like, "Yo, I'm trying to do this thing." Because meanwhile, he 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 was the one that had the Super Sundays idea. I just like made it happen. So he had had the idea for for time, like ages. And then I kind of saw it as an opportunity for me to like prove myself and see, bring, see, uh, let people know what I can bring to the table. So he told me like a week before, he was like, yo, like we're trying to do this for next Sunday. Let's try and get this done. I literally spoke to my friend, AJ, who did that live, live um, show thing and stuff. And then we put that together, I pitched it to him because it was like an, in the heart of London as well. So it was like a perfect location. And then literally just started working on it from there. I did all the graphics myself, like some of the videos, the Instagram, like pushing it for like a week, like, and it got a lot of attention and a lot of people showed up and it was a big, it was a big win. Um, but then they ended up closing after, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a week. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was it was cool. It was a great experience, man. Like definitely, because that's that's what even gave us the confidence to do the festival last year. So yeah. Um. So to that person's question, it it can vary, man. It can be a month, two months, a week. Like it, it just depends on on your team, on what you what you're trying to achieve. Because our art gallery festival, I mean our. our the first event I did, like, I wanted to have time with that because I didn't really know exactly what I was doing. Um, so that probably took like a month or two, something like that. But Super Sundays was like, you have the idea, the next week we're doing it. And it worked out. Yeah. That's actually crazy. Um, <laughs> I was going to think about that for like, the rest of this. Um, as Hashmani asks, um, do you have any interviewing tips? Interviewing tips, research. You got you got to look back and know what you're talking about. Look at other interviews as well. Like those those are the best ways because like when you see other interviews, they they have the answers. Even if it's like basic answers and stuff, at least you have a base that you're coming to the table with. It's not like you're just starting from ground zero. You know what I'm saying. 
So I would just say like, just look at old interviews and like just content about them and research them. No, 100%, I agree. Um, did you, sorry, question from Deborah. Did you receive a lot of support when you were starting up or was it, were you more pushed to go on like a traditional path? Support from? Like people around you, your friends, your family. Oh, you talking about like from my parents? Yeah, from everyone. Yeah, I mean, my friends, my friends, with, my friends were down, like they were gassed, like, because, um, a lot of the people, like I mentioned, that I started out with, like, they were my friends. So I kind of pushed the idea to them. I was like, yo, like, I know you like music. I know you like this. I know you like that. And then they were down to be involved. But then, like, obviously, um, my uh, my, par- my parents, like, most of my, my dad, like, he didn't really understand, like, what I was doing or, like, how it was going to be, like, a means to an end. And it's still, it's still something that, like, I'm working on till now. It's not like I've I've made it or anything, but it's a case where I know exactly what I want to do and how I'm doing it, and I've I've seen enough to to make me believe that like this is the right path that I want to take. And it's also about you yourself when it you wanting to do something for a long period of time. Because with architecture, it was something that I was passionate about, but I always saw myself doing it for ten years and then still doing it after, but be more involved in like um creative direction or like interior design or like just little aspects of the industry. Like, cause one of my idols is um Virgil. So obviously he went to um, university and studied like um, um, civil engineering. And then from there he became a stylist and then a creative director and started being true and then Pyrex and then um, Off-White. And then now he's like creative director of Louis, Louis Vuitton. So, and then he's done collaborations with Ikea and like Mercedes and stuff. So I always saw myself, like just like delving into different aspects of the industry, even as a having a base of architecture. But when when I kind of saw what I was trying, I, that I was so interested in what I'm doing, I was like, why well, start at 10 years from now? We could just start, I could just start it now and then um, just go like that. And it's been a, a tough journey, but it's, I feel like it's definitely, definitely gonna be worth it. And yeah, there wasn't the, the the maddest amount of support from from like my dad in particular. My mom, she's she's you know, you know that's your mom. That she's just gonna like just hope the best. But my dad's always been trying to sway me back into that world. But you just have to have the conviction in yourself to know what you're doing and actually have answers for yourself. Like, cause they might be right. So how are you gonna prove them wrong? You know what I'm saying? So. You have to be diligent. Do you feel like you're getting more support from them now, or is it still the same? Yeah, yeah definitely. Like, cause I, it's just about results, man. You just gotta show them results. When you show them physical things, when they see, when you show them tangible things, they'll like they have no choice. Like, facts are facts. You know what I'm saying? So. No, hundred percent. That's good. Do you have um? Do they have copies at home? Yeah, 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 I have, I have quite a few. Like, obviously, this is the recent one that we did. I always make sure to keep each of them. So this is like the Eva Apio one with um Leo and Tanatsua, and then obviously Sunwise, like I showed you. Um, and then you got um J11. So this one, like this one is pretty important to me as well because like, this is like one of the. Um, guys that I really wanted at first because like I said before I wasn't really in the industry before and I kind of saw him as like someone that was like a, a leader in like the in youth culture basically so he was he's, he has this brand called um um nothing which is like re- like really popular especially when like the whole creative scene in London like pretty much started and he had he had a lot of interest from people like um like Ian Connor, like um, Virgil as well, people like that. And he inspired a lot of young people um, to actually do what it is that they do now. So a lot of people that have brands that are really popping, like right now, like they kind of have to credit him as like a pioneer. So this was like a key one for me. We spoke to him about certain things that he's done, he, certain things that he's done in the industry. 
um, like working with people like Summer Ross, who's like the career director of Cold War, and um, just his brand and like collaborating with like this Nigerian brand called Vivendi and just like telling the story really. And that was like one of the first instances that like, really, and also just the issue itself, it just like, it was a level up in like the way I curated things and did things. So there's that one as well. I think, yeah. Oh yeah. And then we got a Pierre Bourne one, which was like, um, I think 20, no, last year, last year, March. So yeah, he came to London in, in February. We shot that in February and then we put it out in March because that was like the last thing that we had to do to finish off the mag. And it was cool, man. We shot it in shortage. And he was like, he was kind of like named like the number one producer in the world like a week later. So it was, it was a good timing. <laughs> no, it was very good timing, that one. <laughs> Seemed like you planned that. <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea, but it worked out. Um, do you feel, Deborah asks, like you'll always be a part of New Wave, or do you feel like you'll get it going and then move on to someone else? Yeah, I, think, I think, I think that was, it's always going to be part. Of, like it's my brand now. It's like it's part of me now. Like it's definitely something I'm going to keep going. Um, maybe to detail that question a bit more, like probably it will be in terms of like the magazine. Like, would that keep going? And um, I would say yes, because that's been the foundation for every point, like access point that I've gotten. So it's like, that's like, if you're like designing a building and stuff and you forget, you know what I'm saying? The, like the wireframe, like the, the steel beams and stuff, you know what I'm saying? That's like the structure of what you're doing. So, Definitely going to keep going with the mag. I'm, I may not be editor-in-chief down the line. Ideally, I wouldn't want to be, but, like, it's definitely going to keep going. Okay, I think you answer that, Deborah, but do you feel like you'll ever completely leave it and leave it to someone else? Um, what, like the mag or, like, just the brand in general? Like the branding and everything, how you said you're like heavily involved, like the graphics and whatever. Can you see yourself oh. completely stepping aside from that? Yeah, because like it's part. It's kind of like what I said before, like just um, taking away the ego aspect of things. Like if there's someone that I know has the eye of like what we're trying to do and can achieve that, then I'm more than happy, happily like do that. Especially as the brand grows and we have more resources and stuff. So yeah, I'm actually looking forward to that. To be fair. Because it's just, it'll be a case of like, it would just, it would just show us a level of growth, I think, more than have just having someone else do it. It's like you've gone to the point where you're able to do that. You know what I'm saying? So, no, 100%. At the start, did people, like, in terms of finding people to interview, did you do that yourself or did you have people to do that for you? So like at the very, very start, like I would interview people, especially like the main people. But over time it was like people reach out to us and like people have gotten involved in like um um our, our, our journey and stuff, then I've kind of like disseminated that and like swung that over to like people that this part of like the whole value exchange thing that I said, it's like the that's what they're getting out of this, that access to these artists and these people that's gonna help them grow their their brand and their their own um personal portfolio so definitely been been more of a case where it's like been swung over to like other people within the team but if it's a case where i feel like i'm the one that's the most knowledgeable about someone then i'll do it if that makes sense how did you secure those interviews at the start um so when you say the start, are you are you talking about like like early early days or like from the from like Samwise or something? Um, from early up until now, how do you yeah. secure artists? Because it's it's kind of like it's kind of like changed like because in the early stages we would just like write stories about them. We wouldn't even have access to them. We would just like do an article on them and feature them and stuff like that. But as time went on, we started to get like interest from like PR and people that are in that, in that realm and like wanting to actually be featured on our platform. And then from there, that's when those relationships started and like we would actually like work with the artists and 
do it that way. So the PR will give us access and then we work with them and then they promote um whatever they want to promote. So yeah, I'm I think I feel like we'll, with Samwise, like that was just like an email. I reached out to his team, they were down to do it, and then we did that um a couple weeks later, shot the cover. And then from there, people started to tap in and understand what we were about. And then PR started reaching out to kind of do the same, blah, blah. And then we just went from there. Understood, understood. Um, I have a question asking, what would be the best way to contact you personally about collaborations and working with you and artists, whatever? Um, me, me personally, like um, Instagram, uh, E-S-E-O underscore B-O-O-M-I-N, that's my Instagram, or... Like, I always work, like, by email. So, even the New Wave email, I, I handle that. So, um, it's info at newwavemagazine.com where you can, like, just send over any any proposals or requests. So, like, if you want to join the team or anything like that, blah, blah. Because we're actually looking for, like, anyone interested in fashion and wants to be, like, more involved in, like, the fashion side. Like, we're looking for people to, like, collaborate with us, with us in, like, fashion journalism, and then give them opportunities for styling and stuff like that if you're interested in that. So that's something that we want to push a lot more this year. But yeah, like just our email, mainly info at newwavemagazine.com. That's sick. I will drop that in the chat just in cool. a second for people asking. That's good. Do you um, take on interns or is everyone like a permanent volunteer? Uh, yeah, like we we're very flexible. So if you if you intern with us, it's like it's a case of just ten, giving us your schedule. We work with that, and then if you kind of want to move on, or like not be involved as, as much anymore, it's just a simple conversation. Just let us know, and then we'll just like obviously just wish you the best and stuff. But yeah, there's always opportunities for like um, interning and stuff, especially if we feel like your work or like your your eye or like where you're trying to go with aligns a lot with what we're trying to do as well because um we're trying to be a bit more um selective on that side of things just so we like maintain a certain level of quality control no i understand i hear that in terms of like the image that's art direction for new wave is that a group effort or is that more your vision because vanessa says it's really good <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Um, I would say, like, I'm the foundation and then everyone just, well, not everyone, but, like, a couple people just add. So I have to credit um, one of our, like, people that's heavily involved, our creative producer, Jess. Like, she helps me a lot with, like, those things. But mainly in terms of, like, our Instagram aesthetic and things like that and um, the way we present stuff on our website and stuff like that, like a lot of it is me because I, I, I just try and do a lot of research and like try and like tweak things and improve things to like just be more aesthetically pleasing. Um, and it seems to be working because people like it and people are, are more and more interested. So. Not for sure. Um, I noticed that like a couple issues in you had like a big um rebrand in terms of the fonts and that. How did yeah. you was that yeah, was that um a decision that you made by yourself? Yeah, yeah. So like basically because it was more like a design from a design standpoint in terms of like what what logo can we use that's that's a universal logo? Like what is one thing that you can put it on a poster, you can put it on a billboard, you can put it on like a, a opening credits and stuff. And like, it's still the same thing. The one that we had earlier, it was cool. It was like very playful and stuff and like got the message across, but it wasn't as strong. It, it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't like able to be transferable on different platforms and different places where it would stand out and, and um, be very impactful. So, that's what that's when we came up well I came up with um the this kind of logo, which is like an asterisk and like a line underneath it. So mm -hmm. like the narrative behind that logo is the fact that like obviously we touch on various aspects of the creative industry and then like we're kind of like the the base of the platform for it. So that's that's the basic 
premise of that logo. And then with the title in, I just picked something that I felt like was strong and could be transferable. And I feel like, yeah, it could be, it's, it's, it's the one, yeah. Oh, definitely. Did you, was your team supportive of that decision for the rebrand? Yeah, so I, I kind of did it and then I went back to them and then got some feedback and input and stuff. And um, yeah, just saw what people, if you wanted it to look this way or like fit in this, this type of way and stuff. Yeah, I just got their feedback really. Perfect. Bye, everyone. I think time flies when you're having fun. We're about finished, you know. So if anyone yeah. has any last questions, please um, drop them in the chat. In the meantime, what do you think your biggest learning curve was starting? My biggest learning curve um, was on, like, just understanding the, the game in terms of what would actually like help you first of all get into the industry and second of all be able to like um structure your business in a way that like is sustainable because <clears throat> initially at the very very start i didn't really have the the studio aspect involved in what we do because i just i just felt like okay we're getting a lot of attention but how do you translate this into actual business and stuff so that's when I kind of like understood that the services that we provide and like our manpower and the skills that we have or the things that other people want, other businesses want. So that's when I kind of like understood that and um, tried to build that aspect of what we do now. So just like, just that learning curve of like, even getting into that space and being able to like um, position yourself to um, do certain projects I'm, that's something that I'm still learning and I'm still trying to like be involved in, which is like a main priority for, priority for me this year. But yeah, just, and also just like having to do it by yourself, like just do it and then people will pay attention after, whether they pay attention now, later, a couple of years from now. It's about understanding that like, just like, I always say that anything that's productive doesn't go in vain like it, you could do something today and it's productive and it could be irrelevant for a while and then you go back later and then you show it to someone and then they resonate with it and it could spark up a whole or give you a whole opportunity that you didn't even think about you know what I'm saying so yeah or like something that you learned from before and then you kind of leave it behind and then you you kind of use it later on because even with architecture and stuff like that's something that's still part of my life till, till now. And I want to go back back into it down the line. But, like, it, it definitely informed a lot of what I do, even to this day, so. Amazing. Um, there are no more questions in the chat, so I think we're about finished. Cool. Unless you have anything further you want to share. Um, no, not necessarily. Like, I would just like to know from, from the people that are actually listening, if, if possible, like like one or two things that they like about what we do or like things that they feel like we can improve on or get better at and stuff, if possible. Speak now, people. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hi. Um, yeah, so while the talk was going on, I was on the website and I really love the covers. I just saw yeah. the, the Appier one. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. shoot and address and stuff. And I, I also noticed on Instagram, like how it's very, what's the word, like basically that like, there's a lot of black people, which is nice to see. Mm -hmm. So I think that this should like continue as you get more yeah. popular, like keep it diverse. Yeah. And I was wondering like on the websites, like do you have, so how it's printed in person, do you have it on the website too where you can read the editorials and everything? Um, yeah, so basically, like, if you go on issues, so issuu.com, um, all our previous issues are there, like, um, and we have, we had a digital cover featuring, um, Free Boy Doe, which you can kind of see, it's not the full thing, but it's more, it's, it's like quite, quite a lot of it, so you can, like, have a kind of sneak preview of what we do, and, like, over time, because obviously the mags are sold out, we're gonna be 
releasing some of the content that's in print online. So um, watch out for that and like subscribe to our mailing list like for updates and stuff. But yeah, appreciate your feedback because even with that last issue that we did, it was it was like called the excellence issue, um, which was basically like black excellence because a lot of people were, that were featured were, were black people that were doing great things in in the industry. Like Olin Collard used like a great um, cinematographer. He's worked with people like Whiskey, Bernard Boy, Georgia Smith, like um, Lily Allen, like a bunch of different people. Um, Butler Archive, who used to be like creative director of um, What We Wear, which is like um, Tiny Temper's clothing brand. And he's done stuff with Converse, like a bunch of different brands. Um, and even designed the um, Cold Laundry um, flagship store in London. Um, last year, like I mentioned, obviously Eva um, and the other cover stars like Leah and Tinatswa. She's like a writer and like Leah's like an artist as well. So, yeah, we always make sure that, like, we, we tap into, like, Black culture and, like, be a great representation of that and do it in a, in a quality way. Like, it's not, like, like lost stuff. It's not, like, cheap stuff. It's, like, it's really, really good stuff and good information. Amazing. Does anyone else have any further feedback or advice? Hi, um, I just wanted to ask, would you ever consider like incorporating like a publishing element to what you do in terms of like book publishing, like making like, you know, like, um, like photography books and like writing books and those things in general? Yeah, that's, that's really cool you mentioned that because like we kind of we kind of do that. Yeah, like because um, we just put out um, a photography book called Push and Pull. Like there's like eight copies left available. Um, so that that was like a photography book that we did like last year with like our art director and like he's a photographer on our team Diego. So that was kind of his idea and like I helped him like put it together and like get it done. Um and then even in 2018 we I did like a a poetry book with a poet on our team called um Quest Love like which is still available as well. So yeah, we do we do stuff like that like just different types of content um that we sell um, to people just to diversify things a bit. Yeah. Amazing. Um, any other questions? And then are you guys like open to like, what's the word? Um, people like sending stuff for you and then you guys being the producers in a sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it obviously depends it definitely depends on the project um but yeah we're, we're open to it like to hear it out and see see what we can do and see how we can like work together okay thank you yeah that's it do you find like you're open to a lot of different projects you say you do that to diversify yourself do you find that you do that with any wave as well yeah 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 um definitely like we we have like um a podcast. Yeah, that's another thing as well. It'd be cool for you guys to check that out. We um we uh do it like twice a week, trying to do twice a week anyway. It's on Spotify, SoundCloud. You just talk about like different um things in the creative industry, music, like blah blah. We have a radio show on the beat one of three point six every every Saturday. Um, so we just play music and like promote some of the stuff that's on our website and different artists and stuff like that. Um, what else? We have like a new platform that we're putting together um, called Inner Dive, which is basically like like a GRM or Link Up TV, but it's more like tailored vi visuals, like high quality visuals, if that makes sense, or like just artistic visuals. So that's something that we're trying to push as well. So yeah. There's like a couple of things that we're we're doing, and obviously like the studio aspect. So, yeah, always try to be careful also as well to like not do too much at once, like which is what I'm trying to like <laughs> hone in on. But yeah, there's quite a few things going on. <laughs> I love how you say that. I've seen listed off like ten different things that you're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of stuff, man, but. Yeah, 
I think it's just just enough now. It's just about making things grow. Anything that we have now, just make it grow and, and bigger.